Welcome to the Build Your Reiki Business Podcast. I'm Christian of Standing Stones Healing, founder of the Reiki Business Collective and creator of the Build Your Reiki Business Program, sending blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business. Greetings, welcome, and thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Build Your Reiki Business podcast. I'm Christian of Standing Stones Healing, and of course, I am grateful to have you here, so thank you so very much. In this week's episode, we're talking about Facebook Particularly, we're talking about going live on Facebook for your Reiki business. Now, I want to say that this topic came about from the Reiki Business Collective with questions in the collective and with members who were interested in uh, knowing how to go live and for tips on going live. And I said, this is a great podcast episode. I'll do a podcast episode on it. As a matter of fact, I was planning to do a live on going live. And so indeed, I will do them both. And so in this episode, I'm going to walk you through going on, going live on Facebook, and I'm also going to um, share with you some of my tips for going live. But first, why? Why go live on Facebook in the first place? Why would we do this for our Reiki business? And you might be thinking, Christian, I have an in-person Reiki business. I don't really do a lot online. This episode is not for me. And click to another episode. But hold on, before you do that, I want to encourage you to really consider the power of going live, even if your Reiki business is primarily or even only in person. I also want to encourage you to consider checking out a previous podcast episode on content creation that talks about the content hierarchy and the benefits of video. But truly, video is a benefit for your Reiki business, even if your Reiki business is in person only, because People who maybe have met you in person once or maybe have never met you in person can get to know you through what you post online and going live or video is a really great way for people to get to know you online even if your business is in person. And so what that means is that if you have a primarily in-person Reiki business, and you are posting some videos on your Facebook page, uh, YouTube, on your website, and someone in your local area is looking for a Reiki practitioner and they find your website, your stuff, maybe they haven't yet met you in person, but they can really get a real feel for you and your energy by seeing your videos online. So even if you might have an in-person Reiki business only, please don't discount the power of video and the power of going live. So I do think that this is a powerful technique even for in-person only businesses. But Yes, one of the things that going live is going to do for you is that it's going to allow people to get to know you. They can see you, they can feel your energy, they can get a, a really good idea for who you are and how you interact based on how you show up on video and even, even more importantly, how you show up live. Because video is powerful for letting people get to see us and hear us and get a feel for who we are. And then going live adds just another element to that of really being able to get a feel for who you are. You know, we can have the fanciest studio, we can have the best lighting, and we can have the sharpest script. But when we're going live, um, all of that isn't going to reveal as much as how we show up 
in the moment. And how we show up in the moment really does reveal a lot about us. Now, you may be thinking, yes, Christian, that terrifies me, that scares the crap out of me, and that's why I'm afraid to do a live because it's live. (laughs) Yep, fair enough. Like I said, I'm going to give you some tips for that. Um, But uh, going live is a great way for people to get to know you and to get to sense and feel you. Now, in this episode, I'm talking about going live on Facebook. Um, Of course, you can go live on other platforms like Instagram or YouTube. Um, I'm not going to talk about those because, frankly, I don't do them. Um, the, uh, going live on Instagram is not something I do because you have to do it on your phone and this might surprise you, but I actually do not use social media on my phone. This is, uh, one of my, um, personal boundaries and something that I have enforced for ever and actually the only social media I use on my phone is uh, YouTube where I will watch, well actually listen to YouTube videos and then comment on them on my phone, which means that when I am going live on Facebook, it is on my computer and I don't go live on my phone, but that's my personal choice and you may want something different and I accept and honor and encourage that. Um, But for me and my business, we only go live on uh, Facebook and only go live on the computer. So it is a little bit different on your phone. And so the tips that I provide and the way that I explain it and walk you through it will be for Facebook on a computer, just so you know. But the tips that I provide will help you no matter where you are going live. And so um, in my experience with going live on Facebook, and I've been going live on Facebook for years, I have personally had lots of mishaps with going live on Facebook. I've had so many technological challenges. I've had uh, so many um, obstructions, like literal obstructions, um, that, you know, when I go live now, like practically nothing faces me. (laughs) And so if technologically it doesn't work, I'm like, oh crap, that's not what I wanted. And oh well. Um, if I have cat interruptions, oh, well, it happens or things falling on the computer and shutting down the whole live. Yes, that has happened to me as well. And so, um, when you go live, you can't hide those things. You can't hide, you can't edit out the cats that, uh, jump in your lap or cry Uh, You can't um, stop the thing from falling onto your computer, and you can't always prevent the technological challenges. And so it, it really does force you, encourage you to think quickly on your feet and to be adaptable and flexible. And these truly are important skills for any Reiki business and important um, things to be able to do in our Reiki business. But going live will also allow you to expand your reach on Facebook. Facebook loves video. Facebook loves video because it is um, very powerful for getting people to engage. And Facebook as a platform, this is true of any social media platform, by the way. I talk about this in the Build Your Reiki Business program, but the goal of any social media platform is to get you to get on it and to stay on it. And so anything that encourages people to stay on the platform is something that the platform is going to promote. And video is really powerful for getting people to engage. And live video that gets people to show up is also very helpful for expanding your reach. 
One of the things that is also great about going live on Facebook is that after the live is over, the video is still available. And so viewers can still view your video after the live. I can tell you that I have had over the years plenty of people who have not been able to show up live, but who watch the video afterward and are glad to have it afterward. Maybe they can't be there for the live and uh, they can tune in later. That of course only extends the reach of the video and uh, indeed also shows it in more people's feeds and um, brings in more interaction on the video. On social media, engagement drives engagement. So views drive views. The more views that something gets, the more views it will get. The more likes or comments or shares something gets, the more likes, comments, and shares it will get. And uh, so your lives are really the same. Now, when you go live, I want to encourage you first and foremost to have a reason for going live. That means that when you hit go live, you have a message that you want to share, something that you want to talk about. There's a reason for going live. And so you're not just going live saying, well, Christian told me to go live. I have no idea why, but he told me to do it, so I'm going to do it. And then you're just kind of sitting there staring into the camera and thinking, uh, crap, what do I say now? <laughs> so I encourage having a reason. It doesn't need to be um, a big reason. It can be something as simple as I want to share some of my upcoming events. I want to share this beautiful story, something that happened to me today, something that uh, happened with a client. And to just share those things, telling my Reiki story, for instance, whatever it might be, um, have a reason for going live. Now, you don't have to have a full script written out, although this can be really helpful. I never have a script when I go live. I know what I want to talk about, but I've gone live enough. I'm comfortable enough on camera that I know it'll just be there and I'll be able to uh, say it. Uh, I won't, I, I doesn't mean I won't have my ums and ahs. I have my ums and ahs, but I don't have a script. It's the same way that I do the podcast. I don't have a script. So you can't see me, but you also can't see that I'm not reading anything. I have no um, paper here that tells me what I'm talking about. I have no script written out. I know what I want to say when I hit record. And so when I go live, I know what I want to talk about, but I don't have a script. I'm not following some kind of a script. Uh, even in my workshops and teachings, I will maybe have some bullet points of things that I want to hit, but I know the material well enough that I, I don't have to have things written down beforehand. Now, if this is not you, don't worry, you'll get there. But it's okay to have bullet points. It's okay to have a script. It's okay to start off in those ways. So I want to encourage you that if you're terrified about going live because you don't know what to say or how to say it, it's okay to have a script. As a matter of fact, you can set it up just beyond the computer, tape it to the wall, and have it there so that you can glance up from the camera and see what your bullet points are and be able to uh, go off of that script that people might not really realize that you're looking at notes because you have them taped. I encourage placing them just above and beyond your computer or phone, however you're doing it, camera. So that means that when you look at the camera for the live, I'll talk about that in a second, if you need to remember what you want to say, you just do a quick glance of the eyes just upward. And there it is, just beyond the computer or the phone, just above the camera, so that you can easily see the points that you want to hit and what you want to say. 
so that you don't forget something and it will really help you to feel prepared and to ease some nerves. You know, preparation really helps to ease our nervousness. And so the more we prepare for something, the less nervous we're going to be about it. Um, The more uh, confident we're going to feel in the moment when we're doing something because we've prepared, we've practiced, we know what we're going to say. So don't be afraid to use a script. That's absolutely okay. You can do that. But at the very least, know why you're going live. In terms of the setup, the big key to being on video is lighting. The big key is lighting. Most cameras now, whether on the computer or the phone, are definitely adequate for a nice picture, a nice quality picture. And so often when the picture quality isn't as nice, it just has to do with the lighting. And so it just has to do with improving the lighting. And so turning on the lights, if you've got a ring light, use it. I have a ring light. I don't always use it. I usually do um, because simply it's really about the lighting that really helps to boost video quality. But simply just turning on lights, even if you don't have a ring light, is going to improve the video quality because a lot of it has to do with lighting. You know, I get questions sometimes from people who are like, what's the best video editing software? Or what camera should I be using? And those kinds of questions are actually I know when someone is asking me those questions that they're not actually doing the thing because they're putting the focus on how to do the thing rather than simply doing the thing. What I mean by that is that someone who asks, what's the best video editing software is probably someone who isn't editing videos because if they were, they would be busy editing the videos using what they're using rather than worrying about if they're using the right stuff. So what that means is that if someone is asking me, Christian, what's the best camera to use? What that says to me is that they're getting hung up on the equipment and that's keeping them from just doing the thing. And it's almost like using it as an excuse. Well, I can't start doing lives yet because I don't have a good camera. What's the best camera? I need to get the best camera before I can go live. When actually just go live. (laughs) Just start doing it. And your uh, process will improve as you do it. And full disclosure, I have nothing fancy. My video editing software, so not fancy. As a matter of fact, it is outdated. You can't even get it anymore. (laughs) Um, I talk about it in the Be a Content Boss Workshop bonus in the Build Your Reiki Business program. Um, But yeah, I, I do not use anything fancy, period. So don't worry about the setup. Put the focus on showing up, being present, bringing your love and light. That is worth so much more than any equipment. Show up, bring your love and light, bring Reiki, send Reiki to your live, um, and know that what really matters in a live is showing up with authenticity, showing up with a desire to connect and to be of service, and being present. That's what really matters in a live, and there's no fancy equipment that is going to replace that, period. And so here is how to go live on Facebook. Now, of course, you can do this a couple of ways. You can go live from your business page if you have one, um, and uh, you can also go live on your personal page. Of course, you can also go live in a group. I like to go live from my personal page. 
And so what you do is, you know, where you would post, you just click live video. Now, if you're afraid to click that because you're like, oh my God, I'll immediately be live. Don't worry. No, you won't. <laughs> Facebook gives you uh, some opportunities to say, yes, you want to go live. So don't worry. Um, you will not immediately go live, but it'll take you to another page where Facebook is going to ask you, do you want to go live? Um, do you want to create a video event? Uh, I personally really like to create events for my lives because then you can share them. And so when I'm doing a live event, like a meditation or a Reiki session, a card reading, I like to create an event and then share the event so that people know and are aware. I also do go live as an impromptu, but just be aware that if people don't know that you're going to go live, you will most likely have um, a lower turnout. But um, So you can have multiple reasons for going live, but I love to create an event and then share it so people know I'm going live. Now, when you first go live, don't worry, you don't have to do that, especially if you're just practicing or you're nervous about who might show up or people seeing you, don't worry. The chances are really good that the first several times, first many even times that you go live, no one's going to be there anyway. No one's going to see it and no one's going to show up. So don't be offended if no one shows up. It's okay. One of the things that's really great is that if it's really awful and terrible, you can just delete it. So you have the power to delete your live afterward and no one will see it anyway. So take heart. But Facebook's going to ask you, where do you want to post this? You can post on your timeline to a group, uh, to your page, wherever. Like I said, I always just post directly on my uh, personal page, on my timeline. But you'll be able to schedule if you want to. That is all a possibility. But you can just click go live. Even then, don't worry. You're still not going to immediately go live. <laughs> like I said, Facebook gives you lots of opportunities to make sure that you want to go live. So what will happen is that you'll next be taken to a screen where um, you're going to make sure that your camera is working. You're going to make sure that your microphone is working. You're going to make sure that everything is able to work. So everything you'll be able to set up here to test and to make sure that you look how you want to look to make sure that um, everything is set up in the way that you want it to, to check your camera, to check your mic. And you'll also be able to tell what your live is about. As a matter of fact, Facebook won't let you post unless you say what your live is about. And so they'll ask you on the right, what's your live video about? You can just type in a few things here with Reiki updates. And whatever else you might be going live about, you can just put it right in there. And then you can click to go live. Now, when you do finally click the go live button, there is a little bit of a lag. And so there will be a moment when you're like, is this working? Is it, is it transmitting? Because there's a countdown, three, two, one. And, um... So you may be like, am I live? Am I not live? And sometimes the live might catch you unaware and you are actually going live before you realize you're live. Uh, and I, I see this happen all the time and I've done it myself personally. It's like, am I live? Is this working? Um, probably it's working, but just know that at the beginning of your live, you might be looking like you're wondering if you're live. <laughs> Don't sweat it. Don't fret it. The more you do it, the better you get at it. At this point on my Facebook Live journey, I just know. And so uh, I usually am not like, is this working? Because <laughs> I know the process. Um, but then you'll go, you'll do your live. Facebook will let you know how the stream is going. Um, one thing that I uh, like to do is that I like to actually scroll up so that I can see myself um, as I am doing the live. And so that I can see, you know, what, what you see in the video. But when I go live or when I'm on camera at all, I always look at the camera. 
it's very tempting to look at ourselves. It's very, it's very tempting to watch ourselves as we're doing the live, as we are giving our presentation, our workshop, or doing our thing. But then what happens on the video is that it looks like you are looking somewhere else. You're looking like down or whatever. But when you look at the camera, then you look as though you are looking at the viewer. And that's going to help to create a sense of intimacy with the viewer. It's going to help to create a sense of connection. And it's going to help them to feel more in the moment and in the present and included in the experience. And so I do recommend looking at the camera rather than looking at yourself, although you can easily, um, based upon how your screen is set up, you can easily glance at yourself if you need to. Now, as you go live, if you have people who are there and who are commenting, I personally like to comment on the comments. I like to let people know that they are seen and heard. It's very difficult, or at least for me, it's a challenge to type responses to the comments while I'm in the live. <laughs> now, maybe you have magic hands, um, but I find that this is a bit of a challenge. I've done it before, um, but I really prefer to uh, just talk. And then what I'll do is afterward, I will go back and comment on the comments. So after the live is over, I will go back to the live video. I will check out the comments and I will type in a comment to the comments. And this does a few things. Number one, when you go live, sometimes it's hard depending upon how many people are on the live and how many comments there are uh, to catch everyone's comments and you can miss someone. And um, Facebook will at a point scroll up your comments and then you'll lose them if you have so many of them. And so I like to go back to acknowledge people, to let them know that I'm grateful that they showed up and um, to honor them and the time they took to be present in the live. You'll also get people who will comment later when they view on the replay. And so going back and commenting on those comments is helpful too. And it's all helpful, not just to create a sense of community, not just to create a sense of belonging and um, to honor and respect people and thank them, but it also helps Facebook to share your live. So like I said, engagement drives engagement. The more comments, the more likes, the more shares that something has, the more Facebook will show it. And so when you... Um, go back and comment on all of the comments, it will tell Facebook that this video drives engagement, it is engaging, people are tuned into it, and it is worth showing in other people's feeds. Now, when I first started commenting on everyone's comment, I did this just as a way to honor and acknowledge and thank people without realizing that the algorithm really likes it. <laughs> and so that's an added benefit. There you have it. Even if the algorithm, even if it did nothing for the algorithm, I would still do it because I really believe in thanking you for being at the lives and I really believe in honoring your presence but that for sure is an added benefit. So like I said, if this video is terrible, you can always delete it. It is no problem. I have personally deleted some lives myself uh, in the beginning. Um, and so it's okay if you do, it's no problem. One thing I like to do with my lives then is that I like to upload them to YouTube. Now, there are some mixed feelings about this, some mixed... Um,
advice and guidance. There are some out there who would say, Christian, you should not do that because Facebook is a different platform from YouTube. And what works on Facebook is not the same that works on YouTube. And to post Facebook lives on YouTube is not the kind of content that typically gets the best engagement on YouTube. Yeah, actually that's true. But when you do a live on Facebook or you do anything on Facebook, it has a very short shelf life. So if I do a live on Facebook, it might show up in people's feeds for a couple of days. That day, maybe the next day, and by the day after that, it's gone. It's not showing up in anyone else's feed and no one else is seeing it. But if I put it on YouTube, someone will be able to see it years from now. So I like to then upload my lives to YouTube because even though it's not the best content for YouTube, it still means that it can continue to get views, whereas on Facebook, it will not get any more views. Now, ultimately, when we're talking about views, what's really at the heart of it is helping people, serving, and sharing our experiences, knowledge, and encouragement. And so it's not about the views as a number, as it is recognizing that every view behind every view is a person. And we could be helping that person with our live. And that's really what it's all about. And so I think that if we keep that in mind as we go live, it can really help us to maybe get over some of those fears and hesitations with putting ourselves out there and going live in the first place. So do you go live? What are your tips for going live? Please feel free to drop it in the comments for us if you are on YouTube. Or of course, join us in the Reiki Business Collective and share with us at facebook.com slash groups slash Reiki biz. Well, I'm so honored to have you here. I'm sending you so many blessings and best wishes. Thanks for tuning in to the Build Your Reiki Business podcast. Please like, share, subscribe, and send to a friend. Learn more about the Build Your Reiki Business program at standingstoneshealing.com slash build. Sending blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business.